Hi everyone, welcome back to Rachel's studio where my main focus is painting soft yet realistic animals. And today the star of the show will be this black and white cocker spaniel I painted as a commission. I'm going to share one beginner's technique, an intermediate technique, and an advanced technique I used to create this painting. I will add chapters so you can skip around, but if you like this video, give me some YouTube algorithm love by liking this video, leaving me a comment, and watching more of my fascinating content. For example, my hacks playlist is a fun place to start and I'll link that here. Anytime I link a video, it will cue it for you so you can watch it later. Now let's dive into these technique goodies I have for you. First up for my beginner's technique is how to get an accurate representation of your animal and that is tracing. People, I have been painting for 20 years and I trace. I have a friend that is an international award-winning realism painter and I know from that community they ahem transfer which professional artists call it transferring i was just watching a really great video by michelle weber it's her newest video about things professional artists do that you shouldn't take their advice and she made a great point that so many instructors here on youtube hand draw or lead you to believe that they hand draw and i'm using her words here it's disingenuous Painting and drawing are two different skills. You can learn drawing by practicing painting, but you cannot learn to paint by drawing. So you know which skill I choose to focus on, painting. And here's why. Once you get that first layer on, you can't see your pencil marks. And anyway, you can't possibly get every little shadow and detail in your line drawing. You still have to rely on your drawing skills to place shadows and contours, etc. correctly. In fact, my advanced technique is a drawing skill theme technique, so stay tuned for that. But please, don't let bad drawing skills get in the way of the joy of learning to paint. Next, let's look at an intermediate technique. This is a technique that is great at getting soft, lighter areas within a darker area, like the lighter striations you saw in last week's video on painting a pumpkin, which I will link here. Or in this painting, lightening the lower half of the dog's eyes. Eyes can be thought of as mini paintings and should have all the values represented, just like a whole painting should. What I mean is the eye should contain lights, darks, and medium values. So a way I often do that is first paint in the eye with milk consistency paint. And if you didn't watch my basics fur video where I explained different paint consistencies, I'll link it here. So to get the bottom of the eye lighter and create a gradient from light to dark as you move up the eye, I paint the eye in with milk consistency paint on dry paper let it dry a few minutes to the equivalent of the buckling stage so it's still wet and take a clean, damp, wrung out brush that will act as a sponge and lift out paint from the bottom part of the eye. All right, are you guys ready for my advanced technique? Using shapes as guideposts when painting complex things to help simplify the painting process. In this painting, the dog's ears had very complicated fur patterns, but there's a trick you can use to simplify painting them. Look at the shapes in the fur. You'll see triangles and other larger shapes created by the light hitting the curves in the dog's fur. So instead of painting the individual furs, paint the shapes created by the light hitting clumps of fur. So let's take a look at this idea in real time. We'll listen in on some of the real time footage that my students get when they sign up to be a paid student on Patreon. And I'm creating a map of the main shapes that I see when I look at this picture because the fur patterns in this dog's ear is really complicated. So to help see how to paint it, I paint the shapes instead of the individual furs. I paint shapes in the furs and clumps of fur and around the highlights of light. But this will serve as a map for me so that I don't get lost later when I'm painting the ears to put in these darkest areas first. So it's almost like a compass or a map. And then here is that triangle of fur that's really obvious because there's two long white curving furs making that upside down V shape. So that really gave me an easy place to start. I just painted that in and then I could just paint ear color in around it based on where that upside down V shape of dark fur is. So that's what I mean by using these shapes as kind of maps when you're painting these really complicated fur patterns. 
and you don't have to get everything perfect like what's in the reference photo you just have to get the main idea if you get the main big shapes the shape of the ear should evolve and appear in your painting if you really pay attention to just getting the big shapes in thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial subscribe so you don't miss my future content and i'll see you next time